Today's video answers the question, how did the American Indians and Europeans interact with each other? So go ahead and get out your history notebook, turn to the next blank page, and all of the slides will have purple writing on them that I would like you to copy down into your history notebook as you follow along with this video. Today's um, homework video lesson title could be Interactions. When the explorers from Europe entered North America, they interacted with the Native Americans that had lived on this land for thousands of years before. We're going to talk about the three groups that came over. We're going to talk about the Spanish. So what were the interactions between the Native Americans and the Spanish like? Well, the Spanish came as conquistadors. And the conquistador was considered a warrior. You can see he's wearing a helmet, he's wearing armor. They saw themselves as a soldier. And so when he comes to North America to explore, he also comes to conquer whoever is in his way. And that meant for most Native Americans, they were at war with the Spanish conquistadors who came. Now, the Spanish also enslaved the Native Americans, made them their slaves when they would conquer a certain village or town and those um, Native Americans were enslaved. Now with the Spanish as well, they came also with Catholic priests. The Spanish were very um, religious and the priests had come along with them for the purpose of setting up missions to convert and educate Native Americans. So. Oftentimes, they would come in to different villages, and even though religion, uh, it, some of these pictures look peaceful, consider that they are alongside of these conquistadors. Oftentimes, the Native Americans were asked to convert to Catholicism with the point of a sword. So it wasn't necessarily the Native Americans' will to become a convert of Catholicism, uh, it was more of uh, a choice to live, if you will. Um, other times, uh, you can see the Native Americans lining up to be blessed by this priest, um, but in the background, on the horse, is the conquistador. Keep that in mind. So some of these missions um, that the Spanish priests came and set up to help the Native Americans and try to educate them into Western ways and the Spanish ways are still around today and you can go visit them. They are often in the Southwest and out in uh, regions of California near the borders of Mexico. With the Spanish as well, uh, the Spanish brought along germs that, had, that killed many, uh, many Native Americans. You see, the Native Americans' bodies did not have antibodies or white blood cells that had been prepared or trained to fight off the bacteria and the diseases that were common among Europeans. So when the Europeans come over and they begin interacting with Native Americans, whether it's positive or negative interactions, they're spreading germs and they're bringing with them foreign germs that the Native Americans are not used to. So their bodies, when they got sick with these European diseases, they were not able to get well. Many of them actually died when they got sick with the European sicknesses. And it's a very sad thing, but millions of Native Americans died because of the germs brought, all, brought over from Europeans. Many people don't realize or think of Christopher Columbus as a conquistador, but he surely was. He was sent by Spain, and you can see the Spanish flag there that he's holding. He came, um, and many of the things that I just talked about were uh, representative of Columbus's uh, exploration and voyage when he comes in 1492 and the few years following. Here are a few other conquistadors who were sent by Spain, and we'll be talking a little bit about them in the next few lessons. Just a quick overview of what we went through, conquistadors, Spanish priests, and the germs as we came to North America. Coronado is one of the conquistadors that we sing about, 
and I do want you to know a little bit about him. He was looking for a magical place called the Seven Cities of Gold. He is one of those uh, conquistadors who did enslave uh, Native Americans, and he brought a thousand enslaved Indians with him, along with 300 soldiers, into the American Southwest looking for this golden city. He never found it, but he did bring his priests with him, and as he went from village to village, he forced a lot of the Native Americans who lived there uh, to convert to Catholicism. He did not find the city of gold, like I said before, but he did map out what is now New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, and he claimed all of that land. Uh, the French, eventually, um, these fur trading posts become towns, and today those towns have become the cities of St. Louis, Missouri, Detroit, Michigan, and New Orleans, Louisiana. So many people don't realize that, but they are, um, all three of these cities were once French fur trading posts, um, where Native Americans met with the French in order to trade their goods. On this map of North America, you can see the blue region is the French territory, the land that France had claimed for themselves. And if I go ahead and uh, blow it up a little bit, you can see each of those stars represents a fort, a fort that fur trading posts um, All right, the third group of people that come over from Europe is the English. And you'll remember that the English set up the permanent settlement of Jamestown in 1607. But keep in mind that the pilgrims who come to Massachusetts are also English. So there's a common pattern among English settlers. They come to stay. They set up permanent settlements. So you see the evolution of what the Jamestown fort looks like after a few years, you can see that more houses are built, more farmlands, more fences, and it's growing. It's growing on this peninsula here um, of the Jamestown area. Now, keep in mind that as the English come over, they're wanting to establish farms. They're wanting to establish permanent homes. So in 1620, when women come, they're bringing the opportunity for families to stay in the region. And these homes are permanent homes. They are built to last. And as the Native Americans are interacting with the Jamestown settlers, with other English settlers up and down the East Coast, they are recognizing that the English are not going away. They are not 
here to explore, map, and leave. They are not here to trade and leave. They are here to set up farms and take over the land. So even though the English did have trading relationships along with the Native Americans, um, it was always uneasy. And you can settlements. With the English, the English traded tools in exchange for knowledge of farming. The Native Americans were expert farmers. Think about the three sisters, corn, beans, squash, that are very successful in the eastern coast uh, soil. But the English don't have the same type of farming uh, skills or training that the Native Americans have. So in particular, I think of Squanto. Uh, working with the pilgrims up in Massachusetts, showing them how to use fish to fertilize the soil and how to properly tend these plants so that you can get a harvest that will supply what you need. So the Native Americans did trade their knowledge of farming with the English, and this is a primary reason why the English survived. The Native Americans obviously do not have metal as a natural resource, so what was very popular was to trade any metal goods, particularly hoes and um, other uh, axes and things like that, that would have metal you know, that the Native Americans were not used to. We obviously know that things were not always pleasant uh, as far as interactions between the two, and Native Americans did have conflict between the Europeans who came. So your next section of notes needs to be labeled conflict. A lot of this had to do with the ideas of land. These land ideas were different. Native Americans believed that there was plenty of land and natural resources for everyone. When you look at this map of North America, they would have seen it and, and saw land to share. Whereas the Europeans in Europe owned land. Land was not shared land was owned by certain uh, people and then it was farmed. So in the beginning, before both groups understood one another, there may have been peaceful relations or uh, curious relations, but over time there becomes conflict because as you can see this Jamestown settler doing, he is growing crops and these crops are staying. This land cannot be used by uh, Native Americans. This is truly his land and so he's going to protect it. Over time, the Europeans begin showing the Native Americans that this land is no longer theirs like it had been for thousands of years, that it is now the Europeans. So the Europeans take advantage of the Native Americans' trust by drawing up treaties, treaties that are written in a language that the Native Americans cannot read and cannot understand. These contracts were meant to take the land away from the Native Americans, and because of misunderstanding and language differences, the Native Americans willingly agree. This is all based on the idea that Europeans own land and do not share land. And a lot of conflict becomes evident between both groups of people, and you can see a lot of turmoil, a lot of trouble. Here is a really interesting drawing of a Native American sharing a peace pipe with the English, and you can see um, the Englishman in the background reading aloud a contract. Keep in mind, the Native Americans do not use English, they do not use the written word, and in that regard, check out these signatures. So when a chief would sign the contract or sign the treaty, he would not use letters to sign his name, he would use a symbol. And these are some of the symbols that uh, we've taken off some of these documents in order to uh, capture what the Native Americans might have signed their name like. Indian land did not rem remain Indian land for long. In fact,
So you can see the major fight, the fight between the Native Americans and the Europeans was over land ownership. Tribes became pawns in the conflict between Europeans. And a pawn is the weakest piece in a chess game. So as things were going on and these treaties were being signed, the pawn was the weakest link and he didn't last long. It can be trumped by any other piece on the chessboard. And the Native Americans were trumped by the Europeans who had invaded their land. This often created conflict and this is what created the motivation for many Native American attacks over farmers and settlers and we see this happening um, in many of the European um, documents. Language differences allowed Europeans to cheat Native Americans out of their land and resources. Remember Indians might have used sign language but they did not know English and this is a lot of times why they had been cheated out of their land. Here's a few other marks of famous chiefs um, that obviously are not letters that we are familiar with, but actually um, the way that they saw their name as captured in a symbol. And here's a primary source of a chief who signed um, his mark as an eagle. Um, you can see that on the paper. Keep in mind that when the English came, remember they were uneasy about the Native American lifestyle. They, it, that was very foreign to civilized England, civilized France, and civilized Spain. So we studied the John White uh, paintings, and you can see that the way that John White depicted these Native Americans was sometimes like animals and very foreign. You can see he depicted them with the um, ritual there. So when the English come, there's also a drive to convert them to Christianity, to try to help them, um, even though they may not have needed European help, um, the Europeans saw it as their mission to bring them Christianity and to be able to change their lifestyle to make it uh, more comfortable to Europeans, um, hoping that the Native Americans would not live so savagely. Um, so you can see this happened not just with Catholics, but also with other Christian groups that came over from England um, and France over time. Europeans also brought the deadly diseases to America that killed millions of Native Americans. There was some cooperation with the Native Americans. Europeans shared guns and metal tools. We talked a little bit about that, and this would have been the cooperating part, the part that would have um, sustained relationships between the two groups because Native Americans did not have guns, did not have metal tools, and um, they did trade things that helped to the survival of the European settlements um, in North America. Another cooperation we talked quickly about was the farming techniques with the settlers as well. And you can see skilled, talented farmers sharing what they knew with people who had never grown these types of plants before and needed the Native American help in order to survive. 